Thanks for joining us this morning at St George's Park ahead of the April squad announcement. And Anton, we'll begin with you. Nice to see you. Um, look, first off, just how happy, how relieved are you that Lee Williamson is, is back in the squad and you might actually get to see a play again? Yeah. No, of course I'm very happy. Um, squad looks good. Um, many players are available. Unfortunately, Millie's not available. But Leah is available again, and I'm um, looking forward to work uh, with her again. How frustrated was she when she couldn't be part of the last match? She had to pull out of the last yeah. squad. Yeah, we all didn't expect that one, and uh, she the least. Uh, so that was, a, yeah, that was a hard one to take for a big disappointment for her, for us too. But of course, then, yeah, you have to take it and get back and get back in playing games. I think she's... Um, she recovered really well, um, and it didn't take too long, so that was good. And now she's getting into rhythm. Uh, of course, she didn't play that many games yet, but um, she's getting there and getting, yeah, she needs the minutes now. What about Millie? Because you said last, in the last camp you hope to have her back now. Yeah. She's still not here. Are you concerned about how long her, her injury is taking? Uh, well, concerned, little disappointed, of course. We had, we all hoped that went a little bit quicker, but she's taking her time and wants to do the, the right thing to get back and don't get the setbacks again. And um, so she needs a little more time. She needs a little bit, do a little more work in the gym to get everything stronger. And um, that, yeah, that takes a little more time. So hopefully, well, that's what uh, what Emma Hayes said too. Hopefully, she'll be back after the international break. And um, but she's doing responsible things. You've picked a very settled squad, but one player that has been playing probably the best they have during their career is Jess Park. How impressed have you been with her this season, and how close does she is she to break into the starting line? Yeah, she's um, yeah she's doing well. She's enjoying her game. Um, I think she plays with a lot of joy and with a lot of freedom. She has had a lot of patience. Um, you know, over the last year, she made some choices. She went to Everton, got the minutes, came back, and then. Had needed a little more patience too, but was ready to start when unfortunately Jill Ward got, got injured. And um, I think she's doing a good job. And um, as we see many players on that position um, who are doing a good job, so the competition for that position is really high, uh, and which is good for the team. Today is a meeting of uh, following the Karen Carney sort of recommendations. I'm um, just wondering, they were all basically in trying to get everybody working towards the growth of the women's game. Are you happy with the pace in which sort of the women's game is developing and what would you like to sort of see come out of all this? Yeah, there are many discussions around this, of course. Um, lots of things, um, uh, lots of things that will be talked about. I think the game has grown really, really quickly, as we say. What I just hope all the time, which is just a, a part, that the technical part keeps growing together with the commercial marketing part and that that goes all together. When we would go too fast with one part, then we might miss some things, and that uh, will not be good for the game. And it's very important to stay connected. And in the FA, stay connected with all the departments that we do things together, we grow the game together, uh, and we make the right. We have the when important decisions are made, that the right people are in the room, that we know what consequences our decisions are, um, and understand what what will happen then, and that we all come back on what happens on the pitch, and it will be beneficial for the players. Finally, um, we talked a lot about player welfare, about the games in June, the games in July. What was your reaction when you found out Arsenal were going to go on a on a tour at the end of the season, a week before the international break? Yeah. Well, I think we have with the calendar. Of course, we've talked about that a lot. Uh, the windows, the congested schedule, um, and there's there's a lot of challenges for the players and for us too. Um, so we're now working towards the summer. We have very good conversation with the clubs. I was surprised about that trip, but overall, in general, I think at that period, so the competitions finish unless you play the Champions League final. But otherwise, the most competitive and Spain doesn't. Uh, but let's talk about England. The competition starts uh, finishes at the end of May. Then there's one week in between, and then we go into the international break. I think for for all the players um, with already the the complicated uh, calendar. It's, it's not good for them to go to the other side of the world, uh, very short term, not, not having the time to adapt and play a game and come back and go for us to, to two games in France, uh, uh, home and away. So, um, but I would say that's not only for the English players, it's for every European player that goes into the qualifiers, uh, that that's a thing that will be hard for them to take and to perform at the highest level. Thank you. Thanks,
from Mr. Judge. Thank you. Hi, Serena. Um, Hi. Just to pick up on, on that point, did you have a conversation with Arsenal when that was announced and tell them your concerns about some of the England players potentially travelling to the other side of the world? Uh, well, we have um, we had conversations already with Arsenal um, about the, the summer, and that have been very good conversations. We're on the same page, and of course we all think about how to get players fit and fresh to compete, but also give them rest in this complex uh, uh, calendar. I heard later on from that, so of course... Um, I, I'm in contact with Jonas all the time. That's uh, Jonas and I, of course, we talk about players, so I also spoke about these concerns. Uh, they haven't announced yet with what, who is going, who's not. I think in general, everyone who plays competitive games in uh, whoever club would go or team would go all the way to the other side of the world, I think that's hard to take for players in that period um, and then going into a qualifiers. Um, when it comes to England, obviously the new kit was launched last week. There was a lot of debate in particular about the colour of the cross on the back of the shirt. Just wanted your opinions on the new kits and do you have an opinion on the colour of the cross on the back of the shirt? Yeah, there's been a lot of discussions around that, I know. Um, I think the kit is uh, very, very beautiful. Uh, it looks really good. Um, I always really like the crest. Um, the beautiful one, and of course we have the, the white uh, one, so I would like to keep it with that to get another more discussions on that. I'm happy with that. We're playing in it. There's some, some new things in the kit that will help um, uh, performance-wise, which I like. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to see the team in the kit. What things in the kit will help performance-wise? Yeah, well, it's about, you know, sweat things, and about the, the, the form. Um, I don't know how to say that in English, but the, the, yeah, how the kid will work when you start performing and you start sweating and these things. It's, it's, it seems to be better. <laughs> we'll figure out. Very good. Um, due to situations in the WSL last week or the last couple of weeks, we've in the press conferences spoke to every WSL manager on player-coach relationships. Mm. I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on the situation, please. Yeah, I think um, player-coach relations are very inappropriate. I think we could not, we should not accept that. And that's not healthy. Um, and that's basically what it is. I think in our environment, what we, yeah, it's we, it's a professional environment. It's all about performing, and it should always be safe. And then, uh, you know, things can happen, but it's inappropriate, and we all should be very aware of that. At the moment, it feels like clubs are left to police their own situation. Should there be a, a blanket ban that the FA implement or the new co implements going forwards? Mm. Yeah, well, I think when you, it's, it is common sense, we all know that if we, we are in this environment, that is really inappropriate. And I think if we all take our responsibility, then things wouldn't happen. But when it happens too often, then you need regulations. So I'll leave that up to the other ones. I just hope in every environment I work in, that's in how we work, and we always talk about safe environments. Uh, one, this is one of the things that should be really safe and that everyone's really aware and uh, of the responsibility we have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Over to Kip. Thanks, Kip. Hi, Serena. Hope you're well. Um, can I just first ask, obviously, Leah's come back in, and therefore someone has to drop out, um, which was Maya. Have you, have you spoken to her, or just what was the thinking behind Maya being the one that dropped out to the squad? Yeah, of course I've, been sp uh, I've spoken mm -hmm. to her. Um, and uh, Leah's back in. Uh, we we'll talked to the defensive about the defensive line. Some of the players can can play centre back. Some of the players can play full back. Um, and then you look at the competition uh, and what you can do starting, what you can do with, when we have to sub, what we can do when we need a scenario. And then I came to this to this squad, and that unfortunately, um, Maya dropped out of it. Mm, and we talked about. Um the situation with Arsenal's game after the season and um, the conversations you've had with them. More generally speaking, um, with your relationship with the clubs, are you are you happy with the your relationship with them and the level of cooperation at the moment? Yeah, I'm very happy. Okay. Um, we've started in. Well, first of all, we all have. Uh, we are in contact with the club, so I, I I'm in contact with the coach with your coaches all the time, um, before camp, after camp, uh, talk about players. That's the same with our medical staff, physical staff. I mean, there is some, like, uh, um, sports psychology. Um, and also what we did now, we had conversations with clubs, the wider group, to discuss the calendar or discuss the programming for this year and also the, 
the, um, the summer um, challenges we had. Uh, these conversations has, has, are ongoing, but um, we started in January and we had very good conversations. We totally understand each other and that, that and we also understand that it's a challenge. So I'm happy with, um, with the collaboration, with the way we spoke with each other and the tone. And, and I think that is really good. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the summit there and the July internationals, obviously. There's been some reports about um, the England players going to be in camp for a fair few weeks before that. Um, just have how much contact there been with clubs over that and just where, where are you at with, with those plans? We're in a very good place with that. And we told everyone knows what we want to do. Like we all want the players to be fit, to be fresh, uh, to take some time off, of course, but it's mainly an in-season break. And after that, um, for the English players, uh, there will be, a, depending on when you start the Women's Super uh, or the Champions League, round one or round two, but the Women's Super League starts a little later. So everyone, every club that we are in contact with, uh, international players, is really aware of what we want to do and, um, and how and why because th you can't just say in July or June you play international games and then you have f a little more than five weeks and don't do anything and then play uh, Sweden and Ireland. Uh, that's, um, that's impossible to perform then, so everyone acknowledges that too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Serena. Just Hi. to follow on from that, the, the Guardian um, specifically reported that they believed you were doing a three-week Build up to the July camp. Can, can, is there anything you can tell us on that? Is that your plan to do three weeks before the, the, the match against Sweden and Ireland? Um, well, there's five weeks. What we want to do is give some rest, um, and we are we're still in contact with the clubs. So um, we're in the final things with the clubs. So I can't see, be really specific, but it's not a full three week. It's it's similar as we did before uh, the Euros and we did before the World Cup, um, and give them some proper time off too. And that's all in contact with the clubs. And so, I just do you, so. Do you mean in terms of like week, weekends where they would go back for weekends to be with their family yeah. and that kind of thing? Yeah. And the Guardian also said in that report that that, they, that according to their sources, the clubs are really angry. Yeah. About I, that. I'm Can surprised about that. Yeah. Well, they're I was not angry. Give you a chance to respond well, to that. Yeah. Yeah. Not in our um, the conversation we have. There's no anger at all. There's just very good conversation. So I have to be honest. I don't know where that comes from. But the clubs are not angry with us, and we are not angry with the clubs. And, and staying on clubs, can I just follow up on the uh, question about Arsenal uh, and, and Melbourne? Do, do you feel that if there were any England players that you specifically didn't want to travel to Melbourne for that game, do you feel that that message would be heard, and that, play, that you know, if you were to say to Jonas, "I don't want X player to go," that you feel that they would be left behind? Well, I think this is this is a matter of Arsenal, and I, of course, I'm, the last thing I would do is dictate the club or dictate the coach. That's not my job, and that's not what I want to do. I think this is a wider thing, and Arsenal hasn't announced the team yet, so I don't know. I don't know who are going, but I think this is a wide. Like I'm the England coach, but this is a wider. If if clubs, the, the, so let's take away Arsenal. If a club would go, and you have all international players from different countries then I think for all these players who are playing competitive games in June with their country, that will be a hard one to take. Yeah, and I suppose we're having this conversation because of the July fixtures. And I think speaking yesterday or maybe this morning, Andres Juncker described that the July window as just chaos. I mean, is that how do you feel about the, 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 the schedule for July with those competitive games? Yeah, well, we, we of course, we had a similar problem last year. Uh, this ongoing, we are in conversations as we have been all the time, we're away from FIFA and we, we tell the problems we have with the calendar like this, and I just really hope, we all hope that this is going to be solved in the future. Um, in the moment now, in short term, we have to solve it together with the clubs and do what's best for the players and to, yeah, to, to manage them, to give them some time off and also to, to, um, to get them ready for those fixtures and then some players go straight into the Olympics, so where's their rest? And in the calendar, we need some rest, like, we need some rest for the players to, yeah, to, to decompress and to get ready for the new season. And in the future, I hope we can, we can arrange that, because the game is growing and it's really exciting. We have very competitive games, and we all enjoy that. But with the congestion of the calendar and the competitive games, you need to build in rest too and recovery time. Thank you very much. Serena. Hi. Um, it's another squad where Nikita Paris and Bethany England haven't made it. I just yeah. wondered if it was kind of a cl cl case of 
close but not quite close enough or where, where, where are we at with those players yeah um, yeah they're not in I think of course they're very good players but if you look at the squad and you look at the, um, the competition up front that's so tight and so competitive that I have to make choice and I yeah I, I'm not going to bring in like five centre forwards who can some of them can also play on the side so I have to make those decisions uh, and this is what, what the decisions are okay. cheers Thank you. And good luck tonight.